for me, what I, from the from Frank Vanderbilt's presentation is more the realization that we will never see the whole picture like the lawyer does, who sees the client, knows knows the background, see, goes to the sentencing, knows what happened. We are seeing such a slice of what happened. So I think in terms of even the value of the program, or, or to avoid frustration, because it's going to be kind of frustrating not knowing the whole story. And even when there was a comment that we see someone who's not doing their job, well, how do we know they're not yeah. doing it? It's like being a substitute. You know, like we're coming in at an hour show, we missed the first half hour. I mean, it's like, so I think we've got to be careful and, and see what, what is our role and what are we doing. So I think we need to repeat that goal. Yeah, and, you know, I, excuse me, I, I just want to say, don't say anything too interesting while I'm getting these copies made. But I think, I, I think that um, one thing that we can do with our monthly volunteer meetings is to invite someone to come and fill us in on the, the beginning and end and talk about individual cases so that we don't feel so detached. But this is a long process. We won't see this in our lifetimes. I don't think. You know, real justice. But, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep, start to take the first steps. And just to also yeah. uh, respond to that, Terry, We'll get to this in just a few minutes, but you will have a little more than just a snapshot of, of each of the cases because I'm going to show you on the website where you can go. It's a public access website to show you where the cases are, who, who you're going to be seeing that day before you get into court. You'll also be able to check on the link for that case and see the background, the age of the person, the, their, their race, their sex, uh, their parents, what other charges, the charges they're charged with, what their previous charges are, and also the motions and the history, it'll be right down there for you. So no, it won't be a complete, but, but you'll get kind of an idea. This kid's been in the system now for like six months, we're not getting, you know, but you'll, you'll have a little more of a feel than just from, you know, sitting in the, the courtroom in the get-go. Because the first time I went, that's exactly what I did. I just, I sat and, and listened. And I was like, okay, what does this connect to? What happened before and, you know, where am I going to go next? Um, but the second time, I did look on the website prior to going, so I knew who, well, who would be seen and what kinds of cases they were, because there's sometimes a jumble, depending on what day you're going. Um, there's, there may be several different kinds of cases that you'll see uh, during the morning or an afternoon session. So, so that, that may help if we get along here. You may have a little more um, comfort in knowing that there's a little more information than just what you're going to see right there in the courtroom that day. Anybody else? Yeah. Also, as we progress, within a year, we will have, we will be catching prelims, we'll be seeing pre-trial, we'll be seeing different, at different days, different courts, and we will just be assembling our own file, even on individual cases, where we not only have what, what the court puts out, but we have our observations, which will lead to more, even more information about how the process is going. And usually when the, the, the case, whatever you're seeing, is being heard, at the end, they will say, what, they'll set another, if it, there's to be in there again, they'll set another date. If you want to see that case, put it down on the next month's calendar, or whenever that one's going to be again, so that you actually can follow that case, if you so choose. Because I think some of them are going to be way too interesting just to be a, you know, kind of an idle bystander. You don't want to know what happens next. Um, some you won't be able to do that, but that would be an op really an option for um, the folks who come for the you know, first month. You, you hear the case, the case is um, you know going to be continued, and then you'll know the date and time for the or date for the, the next case. And you can look it up and, and uh, actually you know, sign up for that date on the calendar to go to do court watching again. If you're, I, I just want that's another great reason though why we're going to try to go in pairs. I think because. I think there's a lot you do miss, as I did, at least the first two times I went. I, well, I mean, I, I keep continuing to miss, but that pair work can, you know, give you strength and, and give you, you know, a sense of, well, what should we be focusing on here, mm -hmm. and did I miss that, and, you know, this is, so I think that's going to be invaluable that you have partner. And then the monthly meetings, you know, to me, it's just a great model of, uh, I think we will change the just. Yes. Oh, that's fine. We're, we're certainly going to give it a try. <laughs> yes, Carolyn? Has the prosecutor been informed of all of this, or does he know that this is coming? 
not to, for my knowledge, he wasn't the person that was uh, contacted. I contacted the judge, uh, the referee, and people in the, the court judicial system. So this is going to be a thing for him. I mean, this is going to be something that's going to take offense to him. Yeah. Well, we could tell him actually at the hearing, like, what? what and the public defender, too. Yeah, and the public yeah. defender. Yeah. 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 Certainly could. I think that that's. They can get a letter tomorrow. Yeah, yeah the same letter. That would be yeah. Same letter. Yeah. Same yeah. letter. We get a CC with the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a good idea. Okay. From my perspective. Can we right. give him the form of what they're going to be judged at? Oh, actually, we did to the judges as well. Yes, they have that. They have that. Form. Okay. Yeah, Frank. Uh, I just wanted to mention that <clears throat> the time that they set for the next <clears throat> step. Um, may not always occur at that time as things get postponed. That's where the website's going to come in. If you wanted to file, you know, follow a particular case, um, check and see if it's really still on that day. Yeah, sometimes it is postponed. Good point. Okay, so okay. we're so this is a pilot, and we hope that to, that this will expand in numbers of volunteers, and that we'll be able to expand into the adult courts eventually. Six months, we're going to gather a lot of information. And I appreciate all you folks being guinea pigs um, mm -hmm. along with us <laughs> because we are, um, this, as, as Margaret said, this is a pilot, so we're not sure exactly uh, we, uh, what we're going to get and what we're going to find, but we're, you know, we'll hone it down in six months. We'll say, hey, do we need to change anything, augment something, you know? But you're, I'm, I'm glad you're willing to be part of the preliminary study of this. So without further ado, I'm your. Um, folders here on the right hand side. Um, if you will please take a couple minutes and just look over the court watch or read through the court watching program, the purpose and the objectives, um, and see if we have any issues or questions, comments regarding that. This be the only place the judicial, excuse me, juvenile court is held is the downtown courthouse at 101 um, here on here on yeah here on the main mm -hmm. on the third floor. So um, and in number three other objectives yeah when it says promote judicial accountability. Judicial, I'm assuming, refers to the, the ju judicial arm, which is the judges and the referees. So we're not. Uh, well, the judicial uh, process, but <clears throat> that's why I should have said judicial yeah. process, but yeah, that's what the whole process of Because I was thinking about what we did here hearing this morning. We mean uh, the like system. Yeah. yeah. The process yeah. and the system, yeah. not the judges. Yeah. Not just, so, yeah. not just the judges yeah. individually. Right. right. I just one comment about the purpose. It ends with a sentence that says that um, in pursuit of this knowledge, and that we're doing this in the juvenile court, mm -hmm. and that's our the focus of our pilot. Correct. I'm just wondering if we can re reword our purpose later if yes. we need to. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. This is just speaking specifically to juvenile. Okay. Can we go to the next page, which is on courtroom etiquette? And most of the stuff is kind of common sense. But um, for folks who have not been in a courtroom before, or don't have a lot of um, familiarity with going into the courthouse, that might be helpful. Entry into the courthouse requires you to go in through their metal detector and through to have your uh, belongings. It's supposed to say not belongs. Sorry, that's my typo. Your belongings uh, examined, you know, through the little beltway like you do when you go to the airport. Um, you are not permitted to bring in a cell phone that has a camera on it. There's no recording devices allowed. 
there are, when you go through the two double doors, they are on Main, from the Main Street side into the um, courtroom, the court house. On the left-hand side, there are lockers, and those are uh, require two quarters. You can lock anything in there. It's, you know, one was one. You lock, take the key with you, and off you roll. Um, so those can be, you know, you can use those to secure some of the items. I mean, I'm sure you aren't going to be bringing guns in with you or some of the other contraband that's listed on their website. But the one I thought is often people have in their pocket these days is a phone that has um, a camera on it, and those are not permitted in the courtroom. And many people get stopped by that. You, you'll see that a lot of times. People have to go turn around and try and find a place to stick it or bring it. They tell you to take it back to your car or lock it in the lockers. Um, most of the people that come to court are dressed in kind of a business casual uh, attire, and um, uh, there's been a few comments when people don't come in looking as such, like as in a defendant or whatever. But, um, we will have badges. You will be wearing those, um, so that, you know, it's something you can um, kind of identifies us and what the, the, the challenge, not the challenge, but the, with the uh, purpose of us being there. Uh, the courtroom, for those of you who have been there, there is a railing, like you've seen in television court, that uh, kind of dictates two different places, two different portions of the courtroom. The front court being where the defendant, the accused sits, and their lawyer, and the, the prosecuting attorney. And then anybody that's uh, germane to the case sits in that inner railing as well. Behind that, there's a, about three to four benches, basically, of rows of benches in three different sections that you can sit. And, um, and they're not comfortable. <laughs> no, Especially if you're short. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is is that um, for those of you who have a little difficulty with hearing, I would suggest sitting in the center section because um, some folks speak up nice and loudly. It is videotaped. I mean, they record what goes on in the, in the courtrooms every day, but of course we don't see that. And um, so to be able to hear well what's going on, um, usually sitting in the center section if you have any problems with, you know, a lot of um, white noise and that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead. And be bold. Don't do what I did and try to sit in the back seat and back back row and not be seen. Sit right up front, sit get absolutely the best vantage point that you can from there. This is important work. <coughs> By the etiquette of the court, it's supposed to be silent except for what's going on in that very front piece there. You will find that what goes on and that railing, and there's a lot of among lawyers with talking to their clients about the next case that's going to be um, seen that day. Um, so sometimes that's hard, you know, on your hearing as well to try and you know get that um, tone down so that you can pay attention to what's actually happening to the to the case that you're trying to watch. Um, we we really invite you to keep conversation to a minimum and in very low tones out of respect for the court and that's really you can be uh, charged with contempt of court if you're uh, you know you're, yeah you're, you're, well even just speaking too loudly is it's, uh, it's supposed to be their proceedings not ours um, just to give you a little bit of uh, um, understanding the, the court is is divided into morning and afternoon session the morning session starts promptly at nine o'clock it ends usually before noon time um, Twelve noon, though they they adjourn and go on for the next day. The afternoon se start, session starts at 1:30 and is almost always done by 4:30. The courthouse officially closes at 4:30, so usually they they beat that time frame. Okay, okay. On an average case, uh, how long does it take to resolve? Like, is it two half days or? It depends on how many charges and is. Frank was very clear to point out how much pushback. So some of these um, cases seem to come in and go out. I mean, you still need to go through, I mean, the preliminary hearing and the pretrial and all those things are just separate, you know, court appearances. Um, depending on how uh, difficult it is arriving at a disposition or whatever, some of these cases you're talking over six, eight months before they're actually, or and depending on what, what happens with the kiddo in the meantime. And for ease in organizing this as a pilot, what we decided to do was to have people sign up for different court sessions, not to follow a particular case through the court. Now, you're welcome to do that if you want to, because there'll, there'll be gaps and so on, but you can look on the website and see. But for us, the way that we'll cover this 
is to sign up for particular afternoon sessions, you know, on the calendar, and one or two a month to start and see, you know, see how it goes. And that's one of the things we're we'll evaluating. Yeah, we'll be looking at those. What's what happens in the court morning and afternoon sessions in just a few minutes. Yeah. Can you give us? A phonetic spelling of the judge's name. <laughs> phonetic? Yeah. How? Outside. Um, it's kind of like owl, like, you know, how owl. And um, and I don't think she puts, it, some people put it with a T like sight, but I think she, it's like sigh. You know, it's, there's no. No J. No, yeah, it, yeah the J just gets silent. Ruth, you give you a little bit of. Of J. She oh. doesn't know how to say it in Polish, oh. but in Polish it's of J. Yeah, but well, that she does not, she Julia does not pronounce it that way. Yeah. Yeah. She does she not. I know, I yeah. tried outside. to teach her. Outside. But you know what? You will not be speaking to the judge. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's not I know. Well, well actually, actually, she, if she very well may ask if you have questions, she did a Frank and I when we were in their, her courtroom. She knew we were there to observe, and we were sitting in the back of the court, and at the end of her morning session, she said, do you have any questions for me? Okay. So she may very yeah. well do that, and that would be just hunky-dory, too. But you can just call her your honor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Well, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's around that. Side of her. Yeah. Yeah. Side of her. Yeah. Any of the lawyers or the defendants have any um, access to not be there? Oh, okay. That's something we'll tell you too. On the back of your badge, we'll tell you the badge we will be giving you as you leave um, is the statute. By law, Michigan courts, including juvenile courts, are open to the public unless they are closed by petition, which is signed by the judge. They are only closed for specific testimony. The testimony usually is around victims or. Uh, adolescents themselves that are out, you know, teens that are out, and that the, the court deans would be detrimental to have in front of, uh, you know, a, a public audience. But so if they have to tell you that, and they clear the courtroom. Right. Yeah. It's not just mm -hmm. the, the exclude the court watcher. It's Everybody. nobody can observe the yeah. proceeding. So that's that's the that only. And uh, according to what Linda um, Edwards Brown told us, that happens very rarely. Um, so. One other question. Yeah. Mary mentioned that benches are really uncomfortable. If we're sitting in the back, is it ever okay to stand if it's more comfortable? Or would the judge prefer that we sit? I think you have to sit. Uh, well, people do stand, but I don't think that's usually... I mean, they're, they're, the yeah. folks will stand around to talk to somebody and they're over, over in the corner, like the probation officer, the one she stood the whole time. I don't know that it's... it's you know, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I, she didn't take any offense at that, and I don't have a lot of uh, data for that, to tell you the truth, Jan. I don't know if that would be a problem or not. Okay. Yeah. I think highly unlikely, uh, especially if you move the back and stand so you're not interfering with yeah. anybody, uh, there should be no complication. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either, because you're not disrupting the court. As long as you're in a place that you're not, you know, being a you know, wall in front of somebody else, I don't think that would be a big deal myself. Um, I just had a comment that in regard to cold, closed court, I have seen um, signs on the courtroom doors uh, proceeding closed. So, um, yeah. Well, and I know that's true, to, uh, like adoption cases and stuff like that, those are not open to the public. Um, and some of the other um, domestic family court things are not open. But as far as juvenile delinquency court, that's not the case. Do you, do you know, with, yeah, let me look, when we check the schedule before we go, I, I would assume if it's, an, if it's closed, there'd be some indication of that. Do you know? There very well might be. I do not oh, know. Okay. Um, that's oh. something I could question oh. I could ask, but we yeah, both, that's yeah. that's a possibility. So, okay. So are we going for a 9 to noon slot, and if there's more than one case, follow two of them? Oh, actually, you will have more than one case in a 9 to 12 slot. If you go on the docket, um, sometimes, <laughs> There are five or six, five or six on yeah. that morning docket, yeah, and yeah, and you'll see all five of them. Some go very, very quickly, and other ones have a long time frame. Uh, the one that Fred was, re re uh, Frank was re uh, referring to, um, the young man. Frank and I were there in the courtroom when he was there. The young man that's, that's um, severely um, psychotic. Uh, psychotic and, and has profound schizophrenia. Um, you know, uh, that required a bench co conference for over 20 minutes where you can see these, you know, the, the folks are presenting their stuff in front of the judge. 
we you know just had basically sat there until they kind of got their stuff together and came back to the to the um, inner railings there and proceeded with a formal uh, record you know because that was off the record so to speak just in front of the in front of the judge so sometimes they're lengthy like that and sometimes you know they come and they present and one of the things that Frank is which I saw very very clearly was that the public defender often was not presenting much to refute. So it's sometimes a lot quicker than I would have thought that somebody would have had a little more, you know, something to present in the way of, of facts, evidence, whatever. And um, so I, I, I really reiterate what he has to say. The, the one I was extremely shocked with how little the uh, public defender knew about the case prior to actually walking in that courtroom and what kinds of um, information she obtained while she was there in the courtroom. So you may or may not find that, but I, I think it's, it's worth um, you know, being a case. Well, in terms and of planning, you know you're going to be there for three hours. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I put, yeah put it, you could be there for three hours. Uh, the one we oh, were right. in, we were, we were done like about 11.30, I think it was. But the, um, there's also a lot of chatter that goes on in the hallways. And Eavesdropping on that is fair game. <laughs> well, and th and there is a section on your on on your form to, for comments. So if you, for example, saw part of a case in the courtroom, and then later you happen to hear something going on in the hallway, you know, go ahead, listen if you can. Put it down. Well, the other, the other one one thing to answer about that too. Um, the courtrooms are unlocked a little before 9 and a little before 1.30, sometimes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or whatever. But a lot of times the people start congregating in the hall as much as a half an hour before. So depending on how much time you have, depending on how you spend, they, they, you can hear a lot of things that happen in the hallway before you ever get into the courtroom. And so, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to eavesdrop on people's business as far as, you know, the personal kinds of things, but if they're talking about their case, sometimes That's it's a really, it's kind of an interesting piece that a lot of things happen even with the lawyers come and sit down next to their, their, um, um, you know, their, their person and um, they're, you know, they're discussing things and you're thinking, you know, what's, what's going on here? And then you find out what happens when the courtroom, how, how that all plays out when you go into the courtroom. Uh, I just wanted to point out that when they have those little conferences up at the bench, they will often uh, block out the mics with a lot of white noise so you can't hear what's being said between the judge and the, and the other players. And um, in the 1.30 afternoon court, uh, the hearings, those are preliminary, those are the, the kids that were brought in by the police the night before. And they're, um, you know, it's a preliminary inquiry kind of thing. And um, the public defender, depending on who it is, uh, when I was there the one time, I, he would ask the judge for time to talk to his client prior to the start of the proceeding. And the bailiff would unlock the door in the back, and he would take the kid in the back and talk to him for a while. And, you know, kind of drags on, and you're sitting there thinking, uh, you know. But anyway, that's important. That, you know, they do that so they can find out what's going on. Um, but the, I don't think they all do that. Like Nancy said, one time we were there, the person who was a public defender was more interested in politicking with her buddies than. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing regarding that same time we were there, Frank, too, is that, that um, the. Um, Public, you, you had said that the uh, public defender's office, not all the cases were assigned, or he was not assigned to all the right. ones that actually came to court that day for the plenary hearing. So he had no idea who this person was or whatever, and that was, that's, I, I think to myself, why should that be? But it is. <laughs> yeah, the public defender didn't show up that was assigned. But that's the sort of thing that we're supposed to capture yes. on the form. Right. So when right. we get to the form, we get to the form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Kate. Um, are we going to be looking at jury trials uh, or just judicial? Um, actually, there we could, certainly could, but according to Linda Edwards Brown, I believe she said there's been one jury trial. Was it this the last fiscal the whole year? So it could very well be that we won't see any. And I, it, actually, it wasn't a 
Well, she didn't say it was a jury or a bench. I don't know, quite honestly. There was one trial. And, 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 so, yeah, it's as it <coughs> Frank was talking about. That's not something that's usually done. Okay, so, we have just a second. I'm going to interrupt here. It's yeah. 10 minutes to 1. Um, we are scheduled yes. to end at 1.30, and we have a lot of logistical things yes. to take care of. So, um, is there anyone who can't stay another 15 minutes or so if we need to go over? It'd be great if you'd stay really close to this, and then, because I yeah. really can't stay. Okay. But so, I have a question I have to Yes, ask of before. course. You mentioned about the listening to people beforehand. I know we all want to be advocates. Are we advocates or observers? I mean, there is We're observers. We're observers. We're observers. We're observing. Right. Well, Courtney, I could already log in and then come back to use the rescue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can go in and out of the People come and go yeah. As long as you're quiet, respectful, no problem. Um, Judge Altenberg's uh, assigned courtroom is on the third floor. She is courtroom 11, which is, you know, you go up the third floor and you go to the very end. Court is her court. Um, she is there Monday through Thursdays, mornings and afternoons, and Friday afternoons <laughs> if there's any preliminary hearings. So that's, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, Judge Outside has that courtroom on Friday mornings. Um, uh, Courtroom 11 is hers on Friday mornings, where she does only judicial hearings. She, you may, however, have a judicial hearing, excuse me, juvenile hearing, I'm so sorry, a juvenile proceeding may be scheduled on a Monday if she's really getting booked, and that would be down in courtroom 6, because that's her courtroom um, any other, you know, any other Monday. And, and she, if she has an overabundance of uh, juvenile proceedings that are on her docket, she may put those on her Monday schedule, which would be heard in courtroom six. Does that make sense? Okay. And that's on the second floor. They got very big signs. You can tell exactly where you're at as far as which courtrooms numbers what. But what you were saying, a lot of it is on paper here, right? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So um, let's go to the form itself. For the folks that are, and I, don't, I think everybody around here has um, should be up in the very back are your forms. I gave you nine or ten forms to start out with. Um, these forms were, were uh, developed by Fred Van Loo's uh, group, and then uh, a group of us, Carolyn and myself and Frank and Kathy um, Gorlake, looked at what kinds of things uh, we would also want to look at, um, possibly, and jettison a few things and just kind of move things around. This is our pilot um, form, if indeed we find we need to tweak it. This is, you know, one of the things you might want to put on there. If something consistently ends up being a problem or not clear or whatever, um, those are the kinds of things we want to hear about in the monthly meetings so that we can kind of keep um, ahead of this. We also, on, on this form, we added age under um, the accused because we want to know what age our kids are. You know, which, which one, what kind of age kids are we generally seeing and how many in, in each age bracket. So starting at the top of the form, you're going to be only in juvenile court. Uh, we just put adult court in case we're uh, lucky enough to move in that direction quickly. Um, put yourself as a court watcher and what date you're watching. The courtroom number is usually 11. Like I said, every once in a while you'll get a 6. The location is not really important on this one because we're all going to be down at downtown in the um, main courthouse. The case number, uh, I'll show you where that is um, in just a minute. Excuse me? On the website. Yeah, on the website. And because um, you would, otherwise you wouldn't necessarily know what the case number is. Uh, but I'll show you what that is, and the scheduled start time and the actual start time. Please be aware, there may be three cases all to start at uh, 9 o'clock. Well, obviously, they can't start them all three simultaneously. So depending on, you know, who, I don't, I'm not sure how they decide who goes first, but anyway, they can decide who goes first. And so they'll, they'll, you'll have maybe three of them all at the same time scheduled for 9 o'clock. Many times we'll do 9 10 or 10:30, and then like 11, and that's that's kind of their. And sometimes they're only like two different blocks of time. Um, and the offenses and charges. I'll also show you where that is on the website. Um, the type of court proceeding would be like a preliminary hearing, a pretrial, um, a dispositional hearing, a placement hearing, a review hearing. All those will be uh, also on the website. You'll know what those are um, before you get in there. 
um, let's see, time spent in the courtroom for that particular case, if you can put down how many minutes that, you know, or not, you know, there again, not being a court clock watcher, but just to kind of uh, give it a, are we talking 15 minutes we spent here, 30 minutes? Um, just to kind of give you an idea of how much time we actually spent looking at the evidence and, or looking at the, the problem. And um, then if there's a next, a date of the next court appearance, like I said, they will always set, if somebody's a continuing kind of thing, they will set the date for you, before, for everyone, before they leave that case and go on to the next one. Okay, and then of course we got our four main uh, people, the, the juvenile who's accused, the judge, we don't use magistrates in this, um, in the juvenile justice. There's only Judge um, Altside and Referee Altenburg in the juvenile delinquency section of our Washtenaw County Court. Um, the prosecutors, right now, you can put this down, we are currently with Stacy Shaw, S-T-A-C-E-Y-S-H-A-W. In January, that will switch, but she has been since July and so all the things we'll see in October, November, December will all be with Stacy Shaw. I guess unless she gets sick or something else happens, but that's she's the prosecutor. She's the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And November so she comes November. from Brian Mackey's office. Yeah. Yes, she okay. is. Yes, she's assigned through Brian Mackey's office to the juvenile delinquency right now. She switches and does half years. So July through December is um, Stacy Shaw right now, and then Julie Sisson as January through June. Julie Sisson, S-I-S-S-O-N. The accused, or the, the, the juvenile's attorney, is somewhat of still, a, I gotta ask Frank a little more clarification on this because this still drives me crazy. If it says Delphia Simpson under the uh, defense attorney's name, that's a public defender. It won't be Delphia Simpson. Um, normally we see um, Robin, that's Robin's last name. Isn't that terrible? Robin. She's Robin. running for oh, Judge McCoy. Tammy. McCoy. McCoy. Ah, no. Okay. Or Stevens? Robin Stevens, that's it. Okay. We just see Robin Stevenson, Stevens or Jim Kincaid. Jim Kincaid. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Those are the two normal that normally we will see as, as far as um, public defenders from the public defender's office that are assigned to um, juvenile court. There to see C A B E McCabe. No, Ken K. I think it's K I N C A I D. I think. Yeah. I think there's another person too. I've not personally been here, but there was another name that was, that was bounced around. I can't remember it. So, if you see somebody else, that may be it. But on on the on the website, it'll just say um, Duffy Simpson, and it'll say court appointed. It won't be Duffia Simpson. It's her office that will, you know, send one somebody else. Yeah. Looking, you've That's you've kindly um, printed off a lot of information from just the, on the 19th, and so court appointed. I see Kim Moore and Margo Edwards as court appointed uh, attorneys for this one example. Anyway, right. And some names? of some of those because the. Um, the public defender's office can't handle all the cases that come in. They also have attorneys that are on their list. Okay. The the piece you're getting to right now is the kind of the I'm going to go through that. That's okay, but I mean we are going to go through that real quickly to to so you get a little bit of. So that's separate there. from the public defender's office. This is another list. Correct. Of possible right. attorneys to pull from. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. But they they assign when they need to do so. So that's one. I'm not real clear how that all gets. Done and I, I, like as I get a little more clarification, I'll send that information along. Um, okay, and the, the the end part of that or the bottom part of that. Um, I'm sorry. Before I went to, uh, number five, we went through the accused attorney, and then number five is if there's a social worker there, a witness, a probation officer, uh, for anybody that's in the juvenile delinquent or the excuse me juvenile detention center, there probably will be a probation officer there. Um, um, so, you know, we're just looking for race and gender on those, or if there's, uh, I didn't see any witnesses when I was there. There may be, we may have more than one of those, so we may have to do something else as far as capturing that data. But um, is there any 
somewhere where they record the names of people? I mean, unlike you use, I don't expect them to wear a name tag. Right, right. <laughs> so. um, well, like I said, this it's recorded on the on the um, you know the, the audio video oh, stuff that's oh, done. Okay. But we're also going to look at that on the website okay. too. Okay, in just a couple minutes, okay? But sorry. But for example, a social worker would not be wearing an. We might not know which person. Right. Oh, okay. Might looking is a social worker. Okay, I will tell you that you may not catch their name, but if they're invited to speak, they have to give their name and their title. Right. So if it's mom, <laughs> they'll say mother. Or you know, if it's social worker or probation officer, whatever, they'll tell you that. You may not always catch their names per se, but, but we're not really evaluating the social. No, 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 no. So this is just the, again, this is not evaluation. This is this is the data part. The data capturing part is on the front. The evaluation part's on the back. So we're just trying to get a snapshot. We may not need all this information. We may want to jettison some of it. That's what I don't know yet. So we're gonna see what happens. Okay. Um, the last part of this is. Um, Something that, that um, Kathy was really, Gourley has, has experienced. I have not so far in the juvenile system, but I don't have any have a whole lot of experience yet. Is everyone present, physically present with, uh, in the courtroom, or is this a videotape thing where you're getting, you know, um, what do you call it, Skyped or whatever it is? Um, and for most part, we'll be saying yes. Um, is the accused in custody in the beginning, well, here in Washtenaw County, you know they will be because they'll be wearing those beautiful pink, or excuse me, orange jumpsuits, and they will be having their um, waist and um, ankles tethered, and most of the time they're still in handcuffs. So um, you will know that, and they will also be sitting on the far right side of the judge in that uh, railed off area on the other side with a um, detention personnel with them. So you'll know that they're, if they're um, in, in uh, custody uh, if they're dressed in street clothes or not described so that we just want a little more uh, information about that but I think for the most part you're going to find out if they're not in street clothes they're going to be in jumpsuits and shackles and handcuffs um, okay if the accuses of juvenile are parents present now you think that's kind of stupid how in the heck did they get there well if they're if they're not in custody uh, hopefully they both come. Sometimes they do come from a different place because the kid's not living with the parent, the, the, the custodial parent. Other other times we've, there's been cases where it gets postponed or whatever, the kid comes from juvenile uh, delinquency center, but the parent doesn't show up. So you can't, you know, it's postponed and, and recessed at that point in time. But anyway, um, is English the primary language? Um, and if not, is there an interpreter present? Um, that. That's your right, legal right, but um, I have heard of places or cases in this county um, that, that indeed there's not been an interpreter present and that's by law is their right to have an interpreter present. Um, just some of the other things. Does the accused appear to understand the proceedings? Sometimes the kids, you can't see a lot on their faces because you're behind them. So they're sitting there in the front. Sometimes they're, you know, the wizard waiting and they're not in custody, they'll be there along those back rows of um, chairs right before the railing. And um, you kind of get a feeling of how dis, uh, disengaged they are or, you know, they're worried or whatever. But I mean, it's, it's um, kind of a, uh, we just wanted to see if there's some the level of understanding with the legalese that they're experiencing. Um, is a victim, if, if, does the case involve a victim? Yes or no, and is the victim present in the courtroom? Um, and describe the relationship to the accused. Like uh, Frank was talking about the young man, his primary uh, first personal victim was his, was his mother. Um, she was who the domestic violence charges were. Um, she was a victim in that situation. Um, did the jury, well, and then there's just two things for jury members, because we're really not evaluating a jury either, uh, but and if you do our jury trial, we really like folks to um, see whether the jury members are paying attention to the proceedings, and do, does it represent a cross-section of our community, or is it really very well weighted on one side or another? So if you can kind of just, in that bottom box, anything that you, you know, have picked up that you want to have special note of, if you just put that down there, that would be great. The back side is just a, a Likert scale type of one through five uh, evaluation for each of the questions. And the questions are pretty much the same for, you know, the 
same kinds of questions for judges as prosecutor and as attorney. There's just a couple for the judge that are a little different, so um, I'll give you a chance to kind of read through those and see what you think. Um, We notice that the judge made us decide mm -hmm. what should we do. Well, you're going to put on there, if yes, which side? So is it the prosecution or is it the juveniles? Well, I understand that, but I mean, it's sort of annoying when you see that happen. You can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> you can't you can't write that it. up and object. No, I'm sorry. No, so you can write it down idea. and what you can <laughs> do. I'm sorry. Joanna, what you can do is write it down in here and what it was that you observed that made you feel that the judge was um, was favoring one side or the other. We're trying to get as much objective data as we you know as we can. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be nice, I think, to be a sit in her, but right now we're reading observers. <laughs> so um, and then the overall, how well did this court proceeding rate in terms of fairness and impartiality, just as an overall, you know, one through five again. Um, so there's not, it seems like there's a lot of stuff, and some of it seems really difficult. And the first couple times you go to court, one of the things I was going to suggest um, in completing this form, there's another kind of cheat sheet there. Um, first time you go to court, don't worry about the, the, the um, form. You can take it with you, take a look at it, don't worry about completing it. It's not a real big deal. That's not our first issue. The first issue is feeling comfortable in the program. It's kind of getting used to the players, getting used to the flow of the, of the uh, proceedings. And, and I'm starting to, you know, hear those terms. Maybe even just write down something like, I don't know what the heck that is. So, you know, I've written down several of the things so I can kind of figure out, you know, what is, like, I didn't know what the, um, uh, when they did the division, the, uh, Deferred disposition, I didn't know what that was. Um, and we had uh, talked about one of, the, one of the cases, but I just you know, wrote it down and talked to Frank about, about, Frank about it. Um, so um, first they just, you know, kind of, where you make name badge, have a seat there on the court, just sort of soak it in. If you want to bring out your seat, sheet, like I said, and take a look at it, um, cool. By the time you go to the second one, I invite you to go to the court proceedings, the website, so that you can kind of get an information about that. And I gave you kind of a walkthrough because I didn't have a laptop to bring here. And I thought, well, for those of you that don't, you know, very savvy with that, some of us have more, you know, uh, skill than others. Uh, I just walk you through it. If you turn your computer, or put in your computer browser, www.washtenawtrialcourt.org, it'll bring up this first page that you have here. And um, it says, welcome, the trial court uses Tyler Technologies Odyssey. Yeah, that's the whole thing for case management system. Um, on the top of this page, on the left-hand corner, I've got circled, search cases and calendar. If you go over to that, you ever see what I'm talking about? No. Okay, you're, you don't have one. On the back, right? It's, it's you know, so in, inside here. So that's okay. The website name of it is on this front sheet, www.washtenawtrialcourt.org. If you put that in your browser, it'll bring up this page. Okay? This page. Where is this? Where is it? You're looking at it. You're looking at it. You're looking at it. Where is the website? Okay, the website is on this page right here, and that is... The trial court, right, right there. Yeah. Well, then it, it'll it'll bring up this page to you. If you go in that top section and say uh, search cases and calendar, it'll bring up the uh, the back of that page. Turn your page over. And I'm sorry to say my screenshot thing kind of got a little. It was it was it was in landscape instead of um, what do you call it, portrait. So it's got a little bit a little bit crazy. But anyway. Under case records on the right hand side of the screen, it'll have these three things, criminal and juvenile delinquency case records, civil, family, and probate case records, and then court calendar. You want to just circle, or you just want to push on court calendar. And it looks like, do we need to select 20 seconds for the court? 
I'm sorry, say again, Do we need to select 22nd Circuit Court? It's already... 22nd Circuit Court is right now the only thing that's in it. Okay. So, it. <laughs> you can't go wrong on that one. There's nothing to select. Got it. Okay, then that'll, that will take you to the next page in this court calendar page. Um, this is a this is Odyssey system. You have to put in this code that you see that's you know scrambled there in that first uh, required field. Fill this. Uh, it's a tell you to put that in there. That's not this piece, but anyway, you have to put that in there. Under enter the characters seen above. That's in that little line right there. That didn't. Uh, copy very well. And these will probably be different every time you go. Every time you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't just put the same one in. Yeah, don't <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it if you could do that. Then if under required fields, it says search by, we don't know who the case is, but we do know the judicial officer that will be seen. So you go to the judicial officer, you go to a the, um, search by, there'll be a drop down. I think it's either the second or third uh, I think it's the second. It says judicial officer. Push that button for judicial officer. I'm going to put that, let that one go into that field box, judicial officer. That will say forget case and go down here and say, okay, what dates do I'm I looking for? If you're only looking for one specific date, just take you know that date and enter it in there. Make sure um, the two dates on and after and on and before are the same then, because it does <laughs> screw it up. And then push your search button down here at the bottom. Turning one more time. The court calendar results. This was Judge um, Altenberg's docket for the 19th. Which was what? Chris? Monday. Is it Monday? Okay. You're probably right. <laughs> um, and so it tells you the the um, the cases that she saw on Monday that were you know in her court. She's got the you can always tell the the case number that we were talking about to put on the form is this. Most of them say 16. You'll know how old they are. If they say 15, that's from last year, and they're still not finished with that case. Um, and so it's that 16-00231. That's the case number. D L stands for delinquency hearing. So as soon as you see a DL behind the case number, that's a kid. That's a juvenile. It's being, it's being processed through juvenile court. So what's a TL? Right. The very next one. Traffic and local. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, some of them they tell you, delinquency proceedings it says, but sometimes if you want to just know by the case number itself, it'll say DL at the end for those. Um, anything that's a kid, obviously, they'd still be seen by Altenburg for those as well. Okay, and then if you look on the far right side, the date, time of hearing, that's what we were talking about. The, this first one uh, for this uh, young man, Asante Lee Wright, his uh, was it scheduled for 9 o'clock, and that was a pre-trial hearing. So we're at the second box. Then, you know, you can go down, the, another one at 9 o'clock was another pre-trial hearing. And the third one, pre-trial hearing. Are you getting the, the gist that Mondays are pre-trial days for yeah. Judge Elton, or for Free Oldenburg? Ma they are. Yeah, so go down one, two more. So you see not, on that far right column, you see not three 9 o'clocks, then you see a 10 o'clock. Right. And then the next one's another 9 o'clock. It's well, the same person. Yes. Asante Lee, and it, but it's a different DL number. It's 000389 compared to 000231. They're both at 9 o'clock. Does that mean there's two separate counts at least? Correct. Okay. Both, it may be two separate occasions. So okay. then you'll find that when you look on the following page. But anyway, okay. uh, yeah, good point. So this one here is just 9 and 10 o'clock. Kind of, um, and then the, the, the afternoon session, she had one preliminary hearing on the 19th. Uh, an afternoon, um, Finland uh, was scheduled at 1.30 for a preliminary hearing in her, in her courtroom now on that Monday. These on the website, the case numbers will be hot. They'll be in blue. So you just push the case number. It'll open up to the last page that uh, Betsy was talking about, which turn your to the last page in this little handout packet. And this is the register of actions. These are the kinds of things that have, um, you know, will give you the rest of the stuff, kind of the preliminary stuff you want to put on your, your um, 
court watching form and also kind of give you a little bit of an idea, Terry, about what's happened with this kid up to this point. So you've got the, the um, see also he has done the related cases. It's got a, um, a number for that which is different than the number that's the top on this um, Asante. So there's a couple, yeah. Yeah, obviously something else that's been going on. But anyway, he's charged with curfew for minors. Um, and that's a misdemeanor, blah, blah, blah. So it gives you the whole thing. That's a, that's a, a statute type um, offense. But it tells you who his mother is, um, excuse me, who, uh, what sex, um, race, date of birth. And then the attorneys, like you said, the, the point, court appointed attorney, uh, Kim Moore or and uh, Margo Edwards. Now, I think, I believe, and I'm not sure if this is absolutely true, so I'm going to check this out, but I believe that if they have a public defender and they also have a, who may very well pair with a um, attorney on one of their lists, they actually may have more than one attorney listed under their name for their case. And it may have been one that was used in a former, a former um, you know, case that they would have um, still outstanding. So um, then you can see underneath the events and orders of the court, you know, what kinds of things he was in front of this court for before, uh, or what's, what kind of things, you know, have happened in the court. So you, you, you understand he had a ticket offense, he's got, we sent the notice of the hearing, they tell you what date it was mailed, uh, when the uh, preliminary inquiry was, and who was it in front of, what time it was held, and they'll tell you the result. Yes, it was held. Okay. Um, so, you know, it gives you kind of the the listing of the things that happen in, in chronological order, so you can kind of have a little bit of an idea of what's going on beforehand. Good. I have a question. Yes, Joanna. So when it where it says charges, right, as Santa Lee, then it says curfew for minors, and then it says parental responsibility and whatever, and I don't know what that pen means. But is the parent charged as well, since this is parental responsibility? Good questions, Joanna. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I have ever I've seen this one, but I mean, it's, it's um, you know, honestly, um, that's a good question. And do you know what the YT stands for? It's the Lighted Township. Yeah. Well, uh, it's like the yeah. PN could be penalty, we're, we're, we don't know. But. I don't know that one either. I have not seen this one before. Most, I hate to say that most of the ones I've been seeing are carjackings and um, <laughs> um, domestic violence and uh, malicious destruction of property and stuff like that. So this is kind of, this threw me a curve. I, I printed it off because I was in a hurry. I needed to give you guys some, um, um, yeah, some you know, concrete know. ways to get there. Go ahead. Oh, there's a related case at the top of the page, <coughs> case sure. number, and you can search by that. That's case your case number. Well, that's the other one he's on the docket for yeah. for 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. come up also. Yes. Get some more information. <laughs> well, that's why I'm thinking there's also two attorneys, because sometimes if you hit one from before, that, that would be the reason why there'd be more than one attorney, if the other case has not been resolved yet, if it's still you know, outstanding. Yeah, Mary. And sometimes... You'll go to the public defender's office and they'll say, well, they can't take it because they are involved with something that involves both him and somebody else, mm -hmm. and that right. would be conflict of interest, conflict of interest yeah. although sometimes you can't figure out what the conflict is. Um, and so then they give you names of people that can be appointed by the court. Right. Yeah. What is NOH? Under 629, 216, and it's almost down that says NOH. Notice of hearing. Yeah. Oh, notice of hearing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, notice of hearing. Okay. And then on the 9th of September, there's an it says appearance of attorney, guardian ad litem, and lawyer guardian. So there are a number of people involved, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the one of the guardian ad litem is what one of the things that Frank does a lot of too for so I'm not saying I know all the answers to all your questions. I got as many questions, I think, probably as you do. But that's what I know of this process thus far. I'm hoping that will help you get started as well. I just wanted you know, to say that um, I think going the first time for me, I was a little nervous about exactly what I see or, you know, kind of you, know, you have these courtroom dramas in your brain, you know, sometimes. And you find out that it's, it's a lot more... Um, 
in some ways too simplistic because it seems like some of the kids are pushed along a lot faster. And that's some of the things that you know, Frank was talking about too, when people just say, well, you know, we're not going to go for a jury trial. We're not going to, you know, fluff the system, so to speak. So, um, any, any major questions, Frank? Oh, uh, Ms. Major, so when do we put in our, our date that we're available? That's okay. what we want to get to as right. quickly as okay. we can. Oh, we're next. Okay, and that was what, one of the things we were just going to say. Um, I think we're, um, we're asking folks to have a half a, a half a day, two days a month commitment. And um, I, we've said that before, but I want to make sure that's real clear that that's the kind of um, time commitment. And a half a day would either be a morning 9 to 12 session or an afternoon 1.30 to, um, uh, say, around 4 o'clock-ish session, 4.30. The thing I'll say, Friday afternoons are probably a washout. They're not worth going to because they're only preliminary hearings, and that means a kid was brought into the JDC within the previous 24 hours. So it's usually not. I mean, there could be one, there may not be any, and it's kind of it's it's you know kind of waste of your time, so to speak. Um, and preliminary hearings are, are a different animal. If you go in the afternoons, almost any day of the week that anybody came into JDC, you'll see at least one preliminary hearing. As you can see, Judge, or excuse me, Referee Altenberg's uh, case load has a um, pre-trial hearing that we're with on a Monday afternoon. What I was going to, one thing I forgot to tell you, on the very front of that, completing your the court watching form, the back of that form has the types of juvenile proceedings you're likely to see on any given day because they do kind of uh, put them in little pockets. Not that that's going to be all you'll see, because they kind of, you know, fit people in. But on the back of this, for instance, Gail Altenberg, who's in, in uh, courtroom 11, as we know, it says Monday mornings are pre-trial hearings for her. So that's what she generally, you know, puts on her docket for that day. Um, in the afternoon, emergency hearings. And those aren't all preliminary hearings. Sometimes there's an emergency review hearing as well. Tuesday, there's the disposition hearings um, in the morning, and then the placement hearings, like uh, Frank Vanderbilt was talking about when they when the court orders placement, they must review them at a certain interval. And I, you know, like he said, usually three to six months, but it's specific for each one. And then she has pretrial hearings again on Wednesday mornings. Wednesday afternoons are bench trials um, and emergency hearings, like the preliminary hearings we were talking about. Thursday a.m. disposition again, and then Friday afternoon is restitution hearings and any other uh, preliminary hearings that need to be done. So. Um, that's uh, Ms. Alton, uh, Referee Altenberg's schedule. So are you saying EH, um, an emergency uh, hearing, is what? the same thing as the preliminary hearing? It, that, that's kind of encompassing primarily its preliminary hearings, but you may also that's have awesome. a review hearing or something else that comes up that needs, like um, uh, sometimes probation um, offenses or whatever, they'll stick those on the docket, you know, kind of quickly. If they okay. can, um, Something they want to get in there quickly. Can you tell so, me what the difference is between disposition and restitution? Remember, uh, Frank had said that disposition in That's juvenile like court sentence. is like sentencing, sentencing an adult versus yeah. restitution is that, you know, paying, paying money. Money, money back to the victim. 